If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to Downfall Network for more cool content. What's up everyone, Thrall's Mellow here once again, I'm the Crocknack. I'm Jamin and John. And we have an album review for you. So another one that was very, very much anticipated between the two of us here yep. was the newest one from The Ocean, or The Ocean Collective. Depends on what people are calling them now, it yep. seems to be both, but either way, The Ocean, with their new album, Phanerozoic Part 2, Mesozoic Cenozoic. For all of you biology nerds, this is... A really cool album to listen yep, to with yep. lots of references towards biology and human life and such. These guys formed in 2000 in Berlin, Germany, in case you're fuzzy on that. This is their eighth release and I have to say that over the years these guys have become more expansive in terms of their sound. They started off as kind of sludgy post-metal, then yeah. moved into full-on post-metal but with prog leanings. Now we're definitely seeing this band pretty much shift almost all of its attention towards progressive metal. Yep. There are still some post-metal elements, but most of it is in favor of just flat-out prog metal. Which I am totally fine with. Now, usually I'll start off with the opening track on here, but I have to start off with the giant centerpiece and the first track that they put out, Jurassic Cretaceous. This is quite possibly one of the most ambitious tracks they've ever put out. It is the longest song by a landslide on here at almost 14 minutes long. Yeah. It is mammoth, or rather T-Rex size. Giant in scope, we hear all sorts of just tension building, giant epic moments. There's even a horn section in this. An awesome appearance from uh, Jonas Rensk from Catatonia, who popped up in their last album on a brilliant song as well, and also the longest song on the album too. Yep. A bit yep. of a theme there. This is such a magnificent single song. Uh, this might be one of my favorite songs from the band so far. I absolutely love how this song is just hook after hook after hook, and it just seems like there's no time wasted on this one. This is just such a magnificent song. The production on this album is killer. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, two Tw bands in a row now. The yeah. Production has just been through the roof. Well, Jens Bagren. Yeah. I mean, Need we say more? Between the Buried and Me, Ope have the yep. last Sepultura albums that have come out, the last two. Yeah, he's, he's great. This is just so much awesome energy, so much fantastic musicianship. The drum work is insane like in terms of the off time rhythms tribal rhythms just those it, little taps on the edge of the kit look here's the thing man if paul Seidel for whatever reason decides to leave the ocean as the drummer and for whatever reason danny carey gets just tired of playing drums in tool he won't which he won't but if he did this would be the perfect perfect fit for him there's a reason why i'm wearing a tool shirt there's a reason why we're jamming tool this is the most toolish thing they've released. A lot of the same kind of guitar parts you hear, a lot of like that Adam Jones, yep. like those little palm muted, yep. you know, staccato things that he does, the atmospheric sort of stuff. It's peppered in here, especially in the first half of it. And this record's more tool than tool. I'm just gonna say it. Like, yeah, I would say I, the first half of this is more tool than the last one. Yeah, album. dude. The reason I say it's so much more tool than tool is the song Triassic. Aside from the fact that it opens like a, almost like a, it reminded me of like a Western movie. Like the a guitar bit, strums in a Western movie. The first notes uh, I made just because it said Triassic was like, yay, dinosaurs. Of course, that's Jurassic and Cretaceous too. But I also went, in Twin Peaks. Like, it kind of has yeah. that sort of, like, moody, clean tone, like, you know, you would hear in a, maybe a Tom Waits song. But it really starts building with these pulsating synths, and yep. the synths on this album are incredible. Yes. Layered yes. perfectly. Yes. They really, sometimes they actually drive the songs. The instrumental Oligocene, I'm probably screwing that one up, is almost entirely synths. There's some guitars in there, but they're not the most dominant thing on here. Mm-hmm. And it's almost kind of a Depeche Mode song with like a weird jazzy drum beat. Yep. I get reminded of Phil Collins, like the the beginning of In the Air Tonight before he hits that massive turnover, like it had <laughs> that kind of feel to it. And there's atmosphere and Plenty. tons of different feeling all over this album. 
there's so many parts, but they transition really well. Yeah. So if you're gonna write, you know, 37 parts in a song, you know, make sure they fit together, and they do well. But the Ocean's always done well with that. They are exceedingly great songwriters. <clears throat> this one is a bit different than the first Phanerozoic album, which I absolutely love that. That was up there with my favorite post-metal albums in terms of yep. recent releases. This one, the songs are surprisingly a bit shorter. You know, after you get past Jurassic Cretaceous, again, 14 minutes worth of song, but it's all killer, no filler. You read it to songs that don't even like nudge close really to nope. the 10 minute mark. Nope. You know, after Triassic is close at eight minutes and 30 seconds and it's a good, like nice slow builder, you read it to like some shorter tracks that are just, you know, kind of interesting. Uh, Paleocene actually is a real throwback to like their early years, like Fluxion, mm -hmm. and it has kind of a, a hardcore drive to it. There's a different vocalist on there trading off with the Ocean's frontman, and yeah, it's, it's yeah. interesting. And then they kind of squeeze in this abrupt little lounge music part, mm -hmm. which is really good. I, I like what they did there. It's got like a snare drum march over yep. just a really jamming bass drum. I group. love the bass line. Yeah, the, the, the bass, bass line is killer. Is sick and then it shifts abruptly to almost a neurosis type of vibe <laughs> yeah and then eocene again a bit shorter of a track but this one i think that should have been longer it sounds like the tools patient off of uh, lateralis very similar in terms of that you know that riff that kind of carries it yep and it even has that big ascending part and of course the cool polyrhythms but there's also nods like classic prog in there. I picked up like notes of Yes and Early Genesis. But my issue here was mainly the fact that your big centerpiece came at the second track. And nothing else on this album, at least in my opinion, compares to that track. It is yeah. the monolithic. Fir the, the first track... is close. It's close. The first track is closer to the epic second track than the rest of the album is to either of those two songs. I do really like the instrumental track on here. That's one of my favorite tracks. But, I mean, the pacing is strange. It's, it's odd. Yeah. It's odd. It just it feels like you're greeted to a full course dinner and then they tried to like feed you more stuff afterwards. Like, no, I'm, oh, God, this was a lot, dude. It does close really strong with Pleistocene and Holocene. I thought those were really a match to tracks. Holocene has a really great groove to it mm -hmm. and a solid bass line as well. It's one of the more straightforward and songs. And the cello's there. a nice touch. Great cellos. Yep. And then uh, Police the Scene actually comes in sounding like it's a boss fight in Mega Man, but then it actually shifts to this really cool, like, sullen song. And this one builds it, really well. It reminds me of, of Leprous, but without Leprous's vocals. Yes. So, because nobody... Yeah, that, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> that dude's. But this one, like, it, it builds up to like it has that you know very leprous like feel, and then it builds into like blast beats and atmospheric tremolo and real distant stuff. Yep. And I really love that. Actually, that was you know a fiercely one hundred percent the ocean sort of thing on here. Didn't feel like they were like making too many knots a tool or anything like that. But that's just kind of the thing on here in terms of. The nods, like the nods to Tool seem so obvious. And granted, I love Tool, but they were just really, really close to the source. But a point I made earlier when we were talking about this was too, is if Tool releases an album and they're not gonna do anything outside of their normal fucking wheelhouse, if they're not gonna do anything outside of it, <laughs> why not let another band take the reins and do what they should have done. I, I would say Jurassic Cretaceous is the best Tool song that Tool didn't write. Yeah, it's it's more Tool than Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Another thing is I think a lot of these songs could have stood to be longer. Now, Grant, this album is 51 minutes long. Right. But some of these just feel like they end abruptly. Miocene, Pilocene, feels like it just cuts off too quickly. It feels like an incomplete thought. Yeah, like there should have been more after that. And you never get that feeling on the band's last release. Like, everything feels like a complete thought. Yeah. It's well built. And I like the fact that they went with longer songs to let these moments breathe and squeeze in, like, all sorts of cool parts in there. These guys really work well with longer songs, and I think shortening them, it kind of cut them off a little bit. And, I mean, overall, it's still a really good album. These guys are caliber yeah, musicians oh yeah. and great oh songwriters. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just think they pushed a little bit too far to one side of the spectrum. 
So overall, I'm gonna give this three and a half stars. I think this is a solid album. Not quite the follow-up I wanted from Phanerozoic Part 1, which I think is one of their best albums, but I have one absolutely killer song in here and some other really good songs in here. So this is still a really good listen. It's just different. I think, you know, they're changing around things a little bit and pushing more towards Prague. So there are some of the post-metal elements that are maybe getting abandoned and I'd like to see come back, honestly. But still, once again, it's a solid album. Yeah. So yeah. I definitely recommend checking it out. So I'm going to give it a four. And I do want to point out that the clean vocals in this band are very diverse. Yes. Um, they The cleans always fit the mode of the song, which is excellent. I guess I would just say overall, the instrumentation in this album is really up there. Like, they are really honed in on making great songs and even though some of those songs were shortened and there were times where it felt a little bit incomplete like I can't get over how it's mixed and how they put 37 parts in the song and they all transition well it takes a really great band to do that yeah and you know since this is a, a two-parter and and yeah the first CD of this two CD set is so good it's so good and this is a decent follow-up to it there are parts that are could have been better. I expected big things out of this album. And I got big things, it's just, it, it's weird. Yeah. So I, I don't know how to properly actually say what I'm trying to say, but it doesn't matter, it's a good album. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say the first one is Empire Strikes Back, this one's Return of the Jedi. I prefer Empire Strikes Back. Return of the Jedi's still an awesome movie though. Yeah, 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 yeah. what he said. <laughs> So, if you enjoyed the review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we keep doing stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We will catch you later.